Hello everybody and welcome back to Dickie's Videos, where no war game remains unplayed. By further ado, here we are again with Field of Glory 2 Medieval. And let's have another hype video. So today we're going to do something a little bit different, but remember to click that like and subscribe button. We're going to be looking at the two basic lists of the English uh, 11,155 uh, to 1,271 AD versus the French 1155 to the 1319 AD list. So we're going to have a quick look at all the units, comparing them, comparing models, and having a, a great old time and discussion. So I want to kind of go over a couple of the factions that I like, and this is, of course, one of the factions, you know, you always think of the Hundred Years' War, you know, French uh, and English, of course, fighting Agincourt, etc., etc., you know, kind of a big thing in the medieval era, uh, and, of course, the land grabbing in France, etc. So I thought it'd be nice to look at these two factions, have a look through all the models, um, and lucky enough, by hot seat mode, we can deploy both and have a look at it. So just I'm going to have a quick look. So first, of course, we are, of course, going to be looking at the English. And the one thing that stands out for the English so far is the beautiful flags. Uh, and I've got to say kudos to the developers for this uh, and I also want to make sure we can compare the knights of the English and of course the French so as you can see lots of very nice mixed colors here all of them love especially on the helmet I will just load that that is particularly nice um, really nice there of course with the full visor I'm sure I know there's names for it and the flat and the helmet is out there so let's have a quick look at what we get so looking at the um looking at the of course the uh, English list here uh for 74 points we get of course the knights and sergeants which of course are the um uh, 120 men, which is count as a small unit, if it remembers rightly. Of course, the type is knight, unmaneuverable, superior, heavily armoured, knightly lancer and swordsman. So a really good unit at 74, 74 points there. Really much the uh, the massacre unit. That gets in combat, it's going to hurt your enemy. And we're allowed up to six, seven, eight of them for the standard list. Remember, we're, we're just comparing the base list, not the, um, of course, the... Um, the allies as well because that was another video for another day it really is and, and i've got so many good things to talk about the allies as well so we're gonna look at that we're allowed actually one unit of mounted crossbowmen which i do like and they do harass of course armored cavalry armored cavalry and the best thing about armored cavalry uh, like this as well is of course they are superior uh, sorry they are swordsmen as well so they're not just um a basic uh, a soldier and they'll come to, and that was 36 points but the same point cost we can get a lancer swordsman 120 men um separately deployed mounted sergeants so i think that's separate from the knights because i think it says knights sergeants um uh, and that, that is of course them separately uh, i remember the knights and sergeants can actually dismount but as a smaller unit then we come down to the basic one so we get two units of the sergeants one unit of which all we know in for glory 2 of course the uh underprotected like javelin cavalry which is awesome uh, we are allowed of course some welsh spearmen nice big block of men there medium foot of course, take cohesion checks so they can sit in some rough terrain and cause some issues. 50 points, that's pricey because that is a big unit, I think, for 360 points. I don't know if it's classed as a large unit or not, um, but there we go. Then we come down to the armored spearmen. Sorry, they are, sorry, I do apologize. They are average, lightly protected, and offensive. So a good selection already of spearmen, cheap spearmen. Then we come down to the armored spearmen. You see, I don't understand how these are slightly, like, I think, because the price cost of the welsh spearmen are of course because they are the larger block of men if you come down to here where it's the armored spearmen which has slightly better armored but the less there's less of them there's three 240 men there so they are undrilled and heavy foot so taking of course problems rough terrain and turning circles uh unmaneuverable slow again of course against the enemy they're going to take time to move around average armored the welsh spearmen are are average as well but these are armored and defensive so still getting good poa advantage there and then we come i think i think what i'd link to think to the backbone of the english army here uh, it, it, as the backbone of the infantry is of course the spearman defensive feudal uh, or mercenary spearman so we've got undrilled heavy foot 36 points 240 men average protected defensive spearman good block there that would probably be the my unit i have um um 
have lots. And of course, come to the Picts or Pictish or Picts in Scotland. I'm, I'm sure it's wrong, so I'm, uh, you can please quote me below. Of course, these are just your irregular foot more than anything else, uh, which are 240 Warriors, medium foot, will take cohesion checks, extra uh, cohesion test modifiers against heavy or mounted. Uh, the Irish Keens, Kearns, um, really good unit if you've got the points for it. They're like Spanish in Field of Glory 2. They're good to have in in rough terrain but unfortunately we've got better units probably the uh the um the welsh spearman who could probably take up that mantle and be a bet and be better and better at it but if you got points left and you wanted them maybe um of course coming to the raw spearman if you're desperate 24 points for 240 men like i said before a well placed raw unit even like in field of glory 2 ancients like a raw phalanx if it survives the impact it will fight well but of course, it's it's a particularly undrilled, heavy foot, unmovable, raw, protected defensive spearman. So it's got good POAs, but needs to be in a good location to use that. Then we come down to the brilliant Welsh longbowmen, which I do like. They're not as effective against armour, but they are effective. Um, when we come to talk about allies in a couple of days' time, or when I ever get around to do a video on it, um, we'll talk about how you can. And this is, of course, see. I take this is a please uh, uh, congratulate say thank you to CM Speedy for showing me this. Uh, there's ways to actually increase this number during allies, adding, having, having different Welsh units as allies. So we only had one unit here, but they are effective against um, thing. But they do. Um, they do actually take a lot of penalties uh, if units break near them. I'll show you this as well. So Bowman, test cohesion modifier in the open or heavy foot. Of course, one unit. We're allowed a load of raw spearmen, which I didn't put on. Um, of course, crossbowmen, two units, 39 points. Pricey. But uh, they are protected. I thought they were always armoured, but they're not. So they're just 240 men. Um, of course, they are not heavy foot. They are medium foot. Protected average crossbow and 50% swordsman so some combat if, it, uh, if you need to chuck them in there at a last dash if you got brave if you need to chuck them in there they could hold the line for a select amount um of course coming down to the archers which are just the light troops and of course light archers so i was going to say a good list good list of hard hitting knights combination of some decent welsh i think this list i like this list because it picks everybody from around the united kingdom but this list can be improved on massively with allies depending on your phone depending where you're playing it so at this moment in time this list is good but it could be better it can be it can be a lot better with allies um and it just increases of course uh, the certain things like the welsh longbowmen you can increase um and a couple of the other welsh uh, spearmen 50 points these are a lot of men you see, if I would compare this to... So if we look at the Welsh Spearman to the Spearman Defensive, there's a big unit difference there. You know, what's that? What's The the Spearman is 240. The um, Welsh Spearman is 360. So there's a, a big increase. I can't remember if these can form squares or not. But regardless of that, and then when you think about it, this would be my, you know, this would be my choice, really. Um, it would be the Welsh Spearman coming down to the Spearman... Uh, defensive and then of course the, the, the raw if I had the chance you see that's the uh, I don't know if I would even go the I think if I had if if I if I didn't use as much cavalry maybe it would be like this I think this is probably more like the choice going with the Welsh spearmen first with all the points then the I suppose these are armoured spearmen and we're all allowed two of them so it's it is pretty helpful then go to defensive spearmen then of course the raw uh, spearmen and that thing and then if we had any points for the medium foot maybe but I think not really I don't see the their reasoning for these two units in the list if I was playing particularly competitive here um, but still pretty powerful list uh, good amounts of sergeants and stuff like that and I said look at this that the cavalry is just brilliant and the models here are fantastic as it is um yeah so we'll just choose a couple of the units so when we do actually go into this we can actually look at some of the points um if we just click some of these so we can actually see some of the uh, uh i will accept that i will accept that okay so when i spoke about the uh the the cohesion trap uh, so the cohesion checks for the um, thing so longbow ver so for the longbowman longbowman versus cohesion modifier foot without club is losing any close combat so like I said the Welsh longbowmen are taking a massive hits here so as I said uh, 
course, the range is all the same. Uh, so effective at half long range, less affected by armor than other bows. So it, the long bow is slightly better than a normal bow. So thinking you light archer, only ever so slightly better. Um, and of course, the, the crossbow is, of course, uh, then better than that. Um, what did I also wanted to show you? I think, of course, this is the main thing here um, of the... The knights are probably only affected by heavy weapons, majorly. But remember, they are, of course, heavily armoured. So they're the better armour class than the than the armoured. Um, so they are getting that extra POA there. Um, Welsh Spearmen can form squares. That's what I was talking about. Um, so we can form a square with that unit, if possible. So that's another reason maybe I would take that among... Uh, uh, more than the uh, raw spearmen in that order. Um, yeah, we'll have a quick look at the French now. So there we go. Now we're going to have a look at the French. Um, really good list, like I said. Could be improved on. I think the only ally the French can get are the Bretons um, for this list. But as you can see, we can have an, we've definitely got an increased number of knights here. Um, same models. Same models, I think. But I don't are the colours near off the same? I think there might be a slight variant in some of the designs here, but I'm going to have to put them uh, together to look at that. So we're allowed two mounted crossbowmen units. So as you can see so far, I think slightly more dominant than the English list here. Um, but I think both of the uh, both of the armies have some of the pros and cons to it. Um, the, like I said, there's some of the uh, English units that I particularly wouldn't take that I don't think would be worth doing it. So, as you can see, we've got 11. We can have up to, well, if we wanted to, we could have, uh, f uh, what's that, 13 units of knights. Uh, two units of mounted crossbowmen, sergeants. So, we do have a different choice here, which are low country, um, low country spearmen, which are, if I compare them to the Welsh units we just looked at before, um, we're near enough the same, but I think these are bigger units. And I'm sure, I bet you top dollar we could actually I think this does actually form square. Um, and that's it. It's Of course, I think only differently is it's a, um, it's a large target, so it can get targeted more by artillery if we were fighting an artillery army. Then we come down to the armoured spearmen, um, which are just a slightly smaller unit, but of course, um, armoured um, and average armoured defence spearmen. Then, of course, coming down to the spearmen protected... Uh, which are undrilled, heavy foot, average, protected. So I think we'll probably start, if we were choosing the French army, going through the low country spearmen. Because 54 points, but that is mighty, mighty expensive, actually. You know, this is quite pricey things there. You know, the knights are, of course, 74, but 54 points there, still uh, a lot of points. So we come down to the spearmen defensive and the brigands, how you pronounce it. I'm not entirely sure what this troop is. I'm, I may have to do a bit of historical research. So it's just a medium foot with swords. So with basic, um, a basic medium foot. So I think you could probably on par with your regular foot there. Um, actually, no, they're not impact. That That's interesting to see there. So not actually an impact, you're just a, a medium foot unit. I'm not entirely sure where you'd use this because we have other low country spearmen. No, we're lacking medium foot here. So the French, so far, are lacking medium foot. They're a lot of heavy foot, but not very much medium foot. Then the English list in comparison. Um, like I said, I do apologise if the point values don't line up here, but we're just looking at, of course, the core units. Um, but, yeah, this is probably why they got a couple of these units. And then, of course, uh, we are heading on to the raw spearmen. Um, same thing again, 24 points. Gosh, you could really mash out this list with lots of nice cavalry. And then lots of knights as you go. So we could have six units there. Wow, we we definitely dominate on cavalry. We dominate on cavalry, and I think we dominate on heavy foot here than the English list. Um, but raw spearmen, though, I don't know if we take them or not. But I like, I'm loving these two lists how they are at the moment in time. Then we come down to something that we've not seen. Uh, we've seen I've fought against, but not particularly looked at uh, majorly in Field of Glory in Field of Glory Medieval just yet. Um, so we're looking at some peasants, which I think there is an achievement, and please quote me if I'm wrong, for actually killing. Killing a, a knight unit with a peasants. So peasants are, of course, the mob. I don't know if they have any different modifiers. Um, so peasants with agricultural implements, courage of a heavy medium foot, large artillery, no capabilities, 
capabilities even. Uh, untrained. You see, is that count as raw untrained? No. Interesting. So I think that's a lesser quality than raw. That's worse than raw is untrained. So we've got a massive block of men, 512 men, quite specific there with the number. Um, mob, cohesion modifier op in the opening against heavy or mounted. Untrained, unprotected, no capabilities, uh, you know, <laughs> losing. They're, they're like the worse than Bowman in combat. That's what it is. I think Bowman would be the angry mob in combat there. Um, and then we're coming down to the unchristian weapon that we call the crossbow. So the the, the exactly the same as the English crossbow. Um, so the crossbowman, apart from the longbowman, so we're we're requiring the same range. But remember, the crossbow is better than the is effective halved at long range. Shoot slower, but more uh, effective, uh, effective less reduced by enemy armor. So better than the bow crossbow. I mean, sorry, the crossbow is better than the longbow, but the long bow is underneath then followed by the bow against armor so this is the best against armor but the long bow is of course second to that um it's same old 39 points it's the ranged unit for the french army here so if you that's all you've got that's all you need that's all you need to do it um and i think that's pretty good i think I'd be happy with that. I'd be happy with using crossbowmen. Um, but like I said, the only thing that the French list is missing is lots of medium foot. You'd have to go peasants. Ooh, peasants. Yeah, that's where they're lacking. They're lacking medium foot. So it'll be interesting here and fighting a, a French army in the open. Um, but... It's certainly interesting, certainly interesting comparing the two armies together because that I would, I mean, I'd be very pricey. I, I just don't know how many, could you do it? Could you just, this is just for giggles, guys. Can you just go all nights? It would be ludicrous. It would be ludicrous uh, to do this. I don't know why you'll do this, but it'll, I, I don't know if it would be effective or not. Just to go, I'm just going to go all nights. Because it would be the cheesiest list ever. Because the knights are particularly strong. And it would do quite... I, I don't know how well it would do. But you could physically select... This is on a medium battle, of course, ladies and gentlemen. You could physically... So nearly select... Near enough all cavalry, all cavalry for this list. It's going to go crazy. It will go crazy. It really will. So, in this comparison, just as it is, I'd say the English probably may have the slight advantage there due to the fact is the... Um, I don't know. It's, it's a weird one. I'd say the English have the advantage just to the medium troops and the counter cavalry. They may not have enough of the cavalry, but they've got enough supporting units to cause issue. Um, but it's a very good... I think it's a very interesting comparison, uh, these two sim... I think they're very similar, but only ever so slightly different. But this French will struggle on the uh, the medium foot run. If they, if, they was, if they got a bad terrain type, the, uh, the French would struggle there, trying to get in the rough terrain. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Please uh, type below any of your opinions, looking at these two armies. Beautiful models, I've got to say. Um, we'll have one last look at the knight, the French knight, as in their beauty. We'll actually pull one unit out. Uh, so we can see it on its own. Um, but absolutely a thing of beauty there. Um, colours, models, helmets, I've got to say, are really nice. Um, but of course, you know, all the game is looking pretty nice. And, on, on, and of course, the fields. Um, but very interesting list. I'm going to do a couple of uh, videos on allies, looking how it can really shape the lists up. And I, I will say kudos to people who have told me this stuff, which I didn't notice. Uh, but I thought I'd give you a little bit of comparison. Um I like playing the English because I'm from the UK and I'd love to play the French. And I think the French and the English would be a competitive list with allies because uh, they're were, they were, they were certainly strong nations there. So remember, leave them, click that like, subscribe button to keep to continue the Field of Glory 2 medieval hype. And of course, we'll see you on another battlefield where and when. I don't know. But you'll find out, folks. And have a great evening.